All right, so we are finishing up our study on prayer this morning. Uh, devoted to prayer, moving from me to we. So uh, if you were uh, following along in the book, uh, you know that we're out of material. We finished the book, so that's good. So last couple of weeks, we had some supplemental material. Um, and we talked through the uh, impediments to praying together, and there are some. Uh, we talk, then talked through the imperatives to pray together, and there are some. And then we finished with the incentives to pray together, and there definitely are some. So, um, hopefully uh, the Lord is at work in all of us as we are thinking through what it looks like to be a community of faith. Uh, and the specific area here is that we would be marked as a community of faith who prays together. So, uh, we're finishing up today, so let me... Ask the Lord to help us as we do that. Uh, any pressing concerns, though, this morning that we can bring to them, Claudia? Uh, my apartment in November is going to be totally dark. There's going to be no light. Um, and okay. For two weeks. All right. It's here. All right. You should tell your small group. All right. Okay. Yeah. Definitely play for, pray for Claudia. Uh, going on there. Uh, any, anything else this morning? Uh, remember uh, Sean and Alicia as they continue to battle that uh, health difficulty they're in. Nick? Do you have an update on them? Um, uh, last night I knew she's still struggling like to even talk and to walk around. So whispering in a wheelchair for smaller. More? She doing a little bit better? We were there yesterday and saw her through the window. We delivered a, a meal to Sean. But uh, we she said, survived my singing, yeah, so she's we pretty We sang good. to her and made a sign, but she's weak. I mean, she's barely sitting up in the wheelchair. She's not right. barely sitting up in the wheelchair. Yeah, so. It's about the same. I've okay. Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, yeah. 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 Goes by the hour. Of the day. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let me, uh, let me pray for us and we'll dive in, okay? Father, thank you so much uh, that we are known by you. Uh, thank you that uh, you care for us the way that you do. Thank you that you haven't left us uh, by yourself, ourselves, but you have, in your mercy and grace, uh, sent us your Son. And thank you for the salvation that Jesus has brought us. Uh, thank you for the adoption uh, that now we can uh, call you Father, and uh, we thank you too for your word. It helps us to understand what kind of a father you are. So we thank you for that. It helps us understand uh, who we are as your children. So we thank you, Lord, for all these things. Thank you uh, too for your spirit. Um, we are uh, empty uh, without him, and so we thank you that you have sent him uh, to equip us, uh, sent him to convict us, to point us to Jesus to help us as we look into your word. And so this morning as we do that, we are thankful for the uh, promises that are uh, in front of us today, uh, that your spirit is here and is at work. And so we uh, thank you for that today. And we uh, pray for our uh, brothers and sisters uh, who aren't able to be here today uh, because of uh, health issues that they're going through. Um, so for Sean and Alicia, God, we ask you, uh, God of all comfort, uh, to comfort them, uh, give them joy and peace, uh, even as they believe. Um, pray that you would help them to know that they aren't uh, by themselves in this, but that not only are you with them, that you see them, that you are seeing them through, but that we are with them in this too. So help us to uh, um, make that more of a concrete thing uh, by sending uh, texts and notes and Ways to help, uh, prayer uh, for them. May we be who you have called us to be in that, and may that result in much uh, encouragement for them as they uh, wait on you uh, to see how you will answer their prayers. We do pray, God, that you would heal her up. Um, we uh, thank you that, uh, that you uh, are able, um, and we thank you that you're willing to. Um, but as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, um, we want to submit ourselves to your will and ask that it would be done. Thank you that we can trust you in that, as you have demonstrated uh, your love to us in the person of your son. So make those uh, truths uh, fresh to Sean and Alicia as they wait on you. 
Um, we pray too for our uh, sister um, Claudia. She has a lot in front of her with this uh, uh, big uh, apartment overhaul. It's going to put her out of place for a bit. We pray for all the details to be worked out uh, there for Claudia, a place to stay, um, and all those different things that we so often take for granted. So again, help her and um, help us uh, to help her along as well in that. So thanks again, Lord, for the study that we've uh, had these last uh, couple of months, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, wrapping things up today. Uh, but we thank you that uh, um, while we finish uh, this study and things don't, uh, we acknowledge that things don't automatically uh, click uh, all the time for us because this is more than a, a, a head thing, it's a heart thing. And so we ask that you um, would help us to uh, make that move from uh, info uh, down to our hearts. So would your spirit be pleased to do that uh, even today. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, hopefully uh, most of you have journeyed with us uh, through this study. Um, if you haven't, that's okay. Uh, like all of our Bible study hours, uh, if you miss one or seven of them, that's okay. Uh, because they're word-centered together with God's people, and so all of them should be standalones, uh, but they uh, they do build off each other, so uh, it's okay, and I just say that for this study and for all of the other studies, God willing, we'll do down the road, uh, so it's a good time uh, together. So, uh, we'll wrap things up today. Um, conclusions was the uh, title of Fighting Temptations, uh, is how our author John Anucheka uh, finished up his book. So, fighting temptations. Again, the temptations uh, are towards praying together. Um, and there are some there. So, uh, John makes um, this statement. That prayer is a bigger deal than we've made it out to be. It is vital for the life of our churches. Um, let's bring that home. And we should say it's vital for the life of our church. So, uh, if you don't believe that then we've got some uh, work to do. Um, John O. and many other theologians, it's not new to them, talk about prayer as uh, breath. So uh, to be spiritually alive, we need to be breathing, and that breath uh, is praying. Uh, praying together as individuals, but also uh, praying together as the people of God. So prayer is a bigger deal than we've made it out to be. It's vital for the life of our churches. And then John goes on to say, so the difficulty isn't in starting to pray more. The difficulty is in sustaining this attitude. Um, and with all the different things that we've looked at that are packed into praying together, uh, that holds true. So um, much like anything in the life of the church, we can build momentum and we can cast a vision and we can set it in front of people. Um, the difficulty most of the time in all the Christian life is sustaining. But that holds true to the narrative of Scripture. As Scripture talks about the Christian life, not as a sprint, right, but as a, as a race, as a marathon. So there's lots of longevity um, cooked into this thing called the Christian life. And so it holds true as it relates to praying together. So uh, with these temptations uh, that are there... Um, we have uh, our plan through it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to name the temptation, and then we're going to point out the way to avoid it. Um, and this is, this holds true in all of Christian life and all of the different uh, spiritual disciplines and means of grace that God has given to us. There's always a temptation because we are fighting not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and spiritual things. So we are engaged in a spiritual warfare. So there's kingdom talk in Scripture, right? And when God in His grace saves us, He transfers us from the domain of darkness and He sets us where? Kingdom to the life. kingdom of His Son. And so from now until the Son returns, we're at war. Um, and so all of our spiritual um, endeavors are going to be uh, encountered by the evil one with temptation. And so... Uh, in praying together, like in all the other spiritual means and disciplines, of, uh, disciplines and means of grace in our lives, here's a here's a plan all the time. So name the temptation, and then point out a way to avoid it. Because God says that He is faithful, right? He will always provide a way uh, through the temptation. Um, 
And uh, a lot of times it's, it's uh, uh, I was going to say simply by persevering. There's no simply in persevering. But a lot of times it's by persevering through it, right? And so this holds true as we look uh, specifically about this topic of praying together. Okay, so there's uh, five temptations. This is not an exhaustive list. Uh, some common ones that we have. So we'll name the temptation and then our plans around it. So temptation number one is to cancel a prayer meeting. So super practical. Uh, I have experienced this in my uh, ministerial life uh, because it is, it holds true that the least attended thing in the life of the church is the prayer meeting. So you put all your efforts in it, looking forward to it, starts big, starts to do this, and then you're like, okay, you know, let's just cancel this thing and give the people what they want, right? So um, uh, here is a temptation to cancel a prayer meeting. Uh, something will come up. And because we can pray anytime and anywhere, prayer meetings get canceled. Uh, it's just life, right? Stuff comes up. Oh, so we want to acknowledge that. All right? This is half the battle. So yes, things come up. And is it true that we can pray anytime and anywhere? Yes, it is. Right? Um, so because of these things, uh, and when things come up, let's just cancel the prayer meeting. So the way to avoid the temptation. Cement the priority of prayer by your persistence and presence when we gather to pray. Uh, I love the uh, simplicity in that. Um, uh, and uh, I would um, suggest that, I think this is a lot, of, a lot of times in the Christian life, there is simplicity there. Simplicity doesn't mean ease. It just means, thank you God, that it's not rocket science. Right? So it's... He sets in front of us. He shows us how important prayer is. This is this is three quarters of the study that we just did. Seeing the importance of prayer, but specifically praying together. So we need to cement the priority of prayer. How do we do that? Persistence and presence when we gather together. I mean, there's simplicity there, right? So persistence, stick at it. Presence, be there. It's huge. Um, small things, but uh, big things. Uh, John says this, we aren't given the freedom of communication with God to neatly fit it around our schedules. We're given this freedom, free and frequent access to God because we're always in need of it. So let's let that set on me for a second. We aren't given the freedom of communication with God to neatly fit it around our schedules. We're given this free and frequent access to God because we're always in need of it. So again, that connects with, you see the priority of prayer, or the, 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 uh, the fact that it is vital in our lives. If you don't, then persistence in your presence is obviously going to fall off the table, right? So, so again, uh, like um, all things in our uh, Christian lives, it's not just head knowledge. That's part of it, right? We want to see the facts, but we need our hearts to be engaged, and uh, we can't do that. Who do we need to do that? We need God to do that. So as we see in his word the priority of prayer, we want to acknowledge it, say, I see it. And then we can say, but Lord, I don't necessarily feel it like I should, but I want to set myself under your word and the way that you have this set up, so help me to feel it. And as we feel it, and as our hearts are stirred by that, our affections, right, our heart is changed and then our feet will fall. Um, so, temptation number one. Any uh, any thoughts on this one? Any pushback or things that you thought if you if you read the chapter, a light bulb you had or something? Claudia. Yeah, um, I got out of it was tyranny and urgent distraction, time constraints, family issues, illness and whatever, weather, tornado storms and blizzards. Claudia is testifying to <laughs> temptation one. Stuff comes up. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's like um the things that I do in college, you know. Yeah. And you know, also putting there um trying to get to it because corporate prayer is because transportation. Yeah. So yep. that, that's a lot of the distractions and stuff that, that Satan uses yep. to prevent prayer. Yeah, yep. so it's great. And all of those things we can all say yes to, right? 
And then we can say, so Lord, here they are in front of me. Uh, and Claudia is right to connect the dots that that is part of the spiritual warfare in our lives. So let's engage with it. And the Lord uses ordinary means, doesn't he? Which is, again, a very helpful uh, thing for us ordinary people. Yeah. Nick, were you going to say something? Hey, Josh, would you grab that door? I just wonder what you would say to someone who would maybe say, Oh, oh boy. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to schedule as a church that the time we're going to do this is a Wednesday night or a Sunday night, whatever. And my work will not ever let me be there on that day and that time. So how can they consider participating in it? Who cares you're describing it? Or yeah. is there guilt that people might feel that you could maybe alleviate? Yeah. Yeah, well, we should really um, start with the guilt and just weigh them down. Saggy shoulders, <laughs> that awful thing here. Uh, we don't want saggy shoulders. We can do that well on our own. Yeah, uh, that's something that I've tried to weave throughout the study. I want to acknowledge that there are formal times that we should be praying together, and there are informal times that we should be praying together. So I, I would encourage our, uh, you, brothers and sisters, and others who aren't in this study right now, if our Wednesday, uh, for instance, this summer, we gathered the second and fourth Wednesdays of the summer. Uh, that just wasn't doable. That's okay. Uh, we still want to see, it looks like in Scripture, uh, that there is a priority of God's people praying together. So there could be, so that brother or sister, to alleviate some of that guilt that I think uh, they, they may be feeling, uh, we can say, hey, um, you're probably not alone in that uh, challenge, in that situation. Um, so, you know, there could be other uh, creative means that you could do to pray together. So, um, uh, you know, um, I, I know before uh, the Lord set COVID on us, we had people praying uh, here at the church Sunday mornings before Bible study hour, um, through the service, these different things. So, um, yeah, I would, I would try to think creatively for that person. Because if we are saying that it is essential, it's, if it's our very breath, then we ought to be uh, working hard and being creative about how we can how we can do that. Any other thoughts on that? Alan? What about the five-point plan for prayer going forward post-COVID? Is it going to be as before, or is it going to be new? Have you been watching the news? I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. Alan. No, so we're, we're um, hoping, and we'll talk about this in our members meeting uh, in a couple of weeks, but hoping to have a uh, that Wednesday, the Wednesdays that we did this summer, second and fourth, carry over into the fall. So on Wednesdays, uh, having a prayer group along with a learning group um, on a Wednesday. So that's the that's the plan there. Um, thought about having one on Sunday mornings, but I'm not just to be frank. I'm not sure about that. Um, but anyway, so we did Sunday morning <clears throat> when I was at camp. We'd come down for. Uh, just to stay here for a few days. And like, Betsy would go to church and I would go to the prayer meeting. Yeah. Just, just kind of mix things up. And yeah. Do it That's good too if you guys aren't getting along. It gives you more time. <laughs> I look better from afar. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Temptation number two. Form your theology of prayer around how God has answered your most recent prayer. Uh, that's a temptation. To form your theology of prayer around how God has answered your most recent prayer. Why is that not a great idea to do? That changes. What changes? That your theology changes. Okay, yeah, keep Be going. Because God answers yes, and oh, you're all, you're all tuning in. Yeah. God answers no, and you're mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, true. All right, so we have that... Uh, a direct answer from the Lord and say yes. So yeah, sure. I mean, that's the, the fuel that I need. Come on, let's keep going. God answers no. This isn't the first time God's answered no in my life. It seems like there's a so it presents that yeah, challenge there. Also, our theology needs to be formed from what God says. Yeah. Not what we think. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> if the answer's been no, then why bother praying? Now I think that we have uh, spear tackled for lack of a better way of saying it this question in this study um, 
Prayer is much more than just us asking God for things, right? Yeah. Prayer is our communion with one another and the Lord. So there is, do you think about that uh, acronym, uh, ACTS? So adoration, right? That's a huge component from Scripture of what should mark our prayers. Um, confession, right? A huge uh, component of our prayers. Um, thanksgiving. Right? So all, all of those things are more than just the S, which is supplication. Uh, so it's much more um, than that. It's much bigger than me. Right? That's why one of the focuses I tried to hit in this course was moving from me to we. Because as uh, good Americans, we live most of our lives in the me area. Uh, but scripture moves us, um, Americans and not, from me to we. Union to Jesus, therefore I'm united to who? Us, right? So I, I am responsible for you and you for me. Uh, so prayer is one of those things that helps us um, engage in that. So um, here, uh, John makes this statement. I like the word picture here. He said, so, so the answer uh, to this temptation is to leave a trail of bread, breadcrumbs to recount the faithfulness of God when we feel like we're in the wilderness. Leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Okay, so... What he's talking about here is you can keep track of what we've prayed for and revisit how God has answered. It's, it's a really helpful thing. Uh, this goes to some of the uh, design of prayer meetings. Uh, one of the impediments that we looked at towards prayer meeting is sometimes to feel like the wild, wild west and anything and everything goes. So people are a little on edge about gathering together for prayer. One of the ways that we can address that is by setting a, a, a pattern um, of guidance. When, down in place when we gather together. So we try to do that uh, this summer. And part of that guidance can be to keep a track, keep track of what we pray for and revisit how God is answered. Um, yeses give us reasons to rejoice, but so do noes. How do noes give us reasons to rejoice? Well, we don't know the future. God does. And he's okay. a good God who only wants good things. <clears throat> yeah. He gives good gifts to his children. So no is... Is a yeah. Gift. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it looks good to a little kid to run out and play in the street, right? And the no to that little kid seems mean. Uh, but parents and people over children have a little bit more insight. How much more Heavenly Father, right? And our prayers to Him, He He sees us and our hearts, and sees down the road, and is good. Um, yes, is give us reasons to rejoice, but. So do know. So part of that is God is in control, not us. God has a better view of the future than us. Leaving the direction of our lives in his hands is the best place to leave it. Um, easy to do? No. Oh. Uh, the right thing to do? Yeah. Living by faith, then sight, right. Right? I mean, so this is where we're at if we're uh, struggling through gathering together because it seems uh, it's been a lot of no's. And I want to say, too, that it's not just the no's in your individual life. There could be a season of no's for us as God's people here at Five Points. So that com individuals combined with the weeds makes that even heavier. But yet to attach uh, scriptural truths to those things like God is in control, not us. God has a better view of the future than us, and leaving the direction of our lives in his hands is the best place to leave it. So that's how um, we can uh, get through um, this temptation number two. Thoughts on this one? Yeah. I uh, was just thinking about when we endure hardships, about how it uh, grows our faith. Think about <clears throat> consider all joy when we face trials and various kinds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's a great one, Tim, a sweet uh, passage to tether ourselves to, right? That, but the fact that God has to tell us to consider it joy when you enter temptations tells us something, right? It tells us that we're normal, and when we face trials, we're, that's what we want to avoid. But living by faith, wait a second, God says to consider it joy. Why is that? Well, there's all these other threads in Scripture that help. They come together and help us to understand why we should consider joy. Scripture goes on to tell us that endurance produces 
patience, right? Perseverance. Character, mm-hmm. right? These good things um, in our lives. Yeah. Okay. Temptation number three. Individualize what God has meant to be corporate. Uh, to individualize what God is meant to be corporate. So the way around this one is to use plural pronouns in our prayers. Uh, this is a really uh, practical one to keep in mind when we gather together to pray. Uh, you're going to have to nudge each other when you're praying together sometimes, and that's okay. Uh, because we, by default, carry in me. So as we gather together to pray, um, we can should be mindful of our pronouns. And that helps us think about, we should be mindful of people that are gathered around us, right? We, we looked at that one um, last week, some of the impediments to praying together. The very fact uh, of it is that there's other people around. And if you're a quasi-normal person, you feel that reality in life, that people are listening to me right now, I don't want to sound like an idiot. Or people are listening to me right now, I'm not even quite sure what to say. So that's an impediment to praying together. But actually, the Lord tells us that we should be mindful of others around us, that we shouldn't be praying to get attention for ourselves, right? But that we should be having, uh, uh, do little things like put in uh, personal pronouns. Uh, the reason is because this reminds us that we were participants and not merely spectators when we gather to pray. So, Lord, we are praying together tonight that you would do this in our lives. And so if you're not engaged on a Wednesday at 6.30 because you've got a million other things in your brain, welcome to the club, right? I mean, here we are. But when, when your brother or sister is praying that, it pulls you in. Like, oh, I, I, it shakes you out of the wall. So, I, yes, I'm together in this right now with, with them. It reminds us that we're participants, not merely spectators. It reminds us that we're not merely individuals, but also part of the family. Here again, we're moving from... Uh, me to we. Um, another um, practical way through this temptation is that we are told in Scripture that we should confess our sins to each other. Uh, that's a hard one to do because naturally we want to we, we don't want to acknowledge those sorts of things. But again, God in His grace says, yes, confess your sins uh, to one another. Um, again, you can see how Shaping doing this is, and that's not uh, by accident, it's by design. So again, the priority of praying together, um, we see it uh, all throughout Scripture. Uh, thoughts on this one? There is going to be an individual component to all of this, right? We're individuals. So to pretend that how I'm showing up whenever we're showing up to pray together, that I don't count, you're missing the point there. So I am coming in, and I, you can tell your brothers and sisters, rough week. Not even sure if I can uh, pray tonight with you uh, audibly, but I want you to know I'm with it in the So let's pray together in that. So you are bringing your individual things. Uh, obviously, you confess your sins. That's an individual you, right? So that's you. You're confessing that. That helps a brother and a sister in Christ as they hear that, as they see the grace of God at work in you, producing humility in you. Uh, a desire to keep that out of our out of our body. So yeah, just another some more thoughts there. Okay, uh, temptation number four. Um, assume people know what prayer is and how they should do it. Assume people know what prayer is and how they should do it. Um, someone, someone. Uh, recently told me that uh, one time when I led us in our uh, corporate prayer on a Sunday that they had uh, some guests in with them and after the service they were talking to their guests about how you know what they thought and they said they were really uh, ticked off at me. I'm like me? What did I do? You know? Um, They said well uh, they didn't know you were praying when you were praying and they really hoped that people standing up in front would have eye contact with people and would be engaging to them and so they just kind of laughed it off and like well he was praying like that's just what we do when we pray close our eyes everybody's engaged and we're doing that sort of thing so i just thought about that when we think what here we assume that people know what prayer is and even how they should do it right um again thankfully uh jesus tells us how to pray 
right? So he's already in front of it. Uh, he's already in front of us. Uh, just because prayer is necessary doesn't mean it comes naturally. All right? It's a supernatural thing. Um, that's why God in his grace and his word tells us how to do it. Uh, um, so we can here provide clear guidance of what prayer is and how to do it. John says, reading a book on prayer is fine. Releasing your burdens to each other and together taking them to God is better. So uh, this is why I put this under the provide clear guidance of what prayer is and how we do it. So I've tried to do that this summer um, by anchoring our times together in the Psalms. Uh, the Psalms provide clear guidance for us. That's why God's people have for centuries gone to the prayers or the Psalms to guide their prayers together, to guide their worship together. So, uh, how do we do it? What do I say? Pray scripture. What does that mean? Well, let's walk through it. And let's, the phrase that I've been using in our Wednesdays is, uh, one way that we can talk about prayer is connecting the world that God has put us in with the word that he has given us as his beloved children. So that provides some guidance. Hopefully we're connecting the world that we live in. What does that mean? What's going on in your world? What's going on in our world? God is the one who is brought that about in his sovereignty, right? So what's the world look like around me? David's all about that in the Psalms, right? My enemies are pursuing me, you know? Um, the sin in my heart is just destroying me. So he's connecting the world that God has put him in with what? Then David moves to who God is and the word that God has given us. So we begin to connect these things and we do that as beloved children of our Heavenly Father. Right? So that provides, that's, that was my agenda there, to provide us some Guidance of what prayer is and how uh, to do it. And I just I thought this was a really helpful um, thing there for us as God's people. Uh, that we, again, remember that uh, it is both the intellect. Uh, so reading a book on prayer is fine. Um, our author wrote the book, so I mean, I think he's in favor of books. Um, but, uh, or we should, could say, uh, in addition to that, though, releasing your burdens to each other and together taking them to God is better. So let's, let's put this in the uh, real life practical stuff and go. Okay, uh, any thoughts on, on uh, this one there? Assuming people know what prayer is and how they should do it. Um, have you all figured out prayer? Uh, that just speaks to the trajectory of scripture, right? And we are always, uh, if you're a Christian, a disciple of Jesus. A learner. When does the learning stop? It doesn't, right? Because we're always looking to Jesus, dependent upon his spirit to continue to conform us into the image of his son. And as he does that, that is so beautiful, isn't it? In our lives, we are becoming more like Jesus. And isn't that sweet for those around you? That's the whole point of uh, what we're doing here together. So, so yeah, and, and there's a humility in here. And that's not something that comes natural to us. So we need the Lord to do that. Well, yeah. I mean, so look at Jesus, right? He gives us Philippians 2, this mindset of humility. Um, and so, yeah, we need a, it is really encouraging. Uh, if you, like me, have struggled with something uh, and you get together with another brother and sister in Christ and they say, yeah, I have to. And I am right now. So let's struggle in this together. Right? And that's one of, that's not coincidental. Again, that's why God calls us together. That's the beauty and the diversity of the body. That we need one another. Um, strengths and weaknesses and on we go. Okay, uh, temptation number five. Measure the effectiveness of our prayer gatherings by the amount of people that attend. Um, that's the culture that we live in. So let's just name it, because there it is. This is a good... Uh, oh, never mind. I was going to talk about name and claim it, but... Uh, Leave that there. Uh, measure the effectiveness of our prayer gathering by the amount of people that attend. And in our results-oriented culture, this temptation will be our most difficult to move past. That's what John says. In our result-oriented culture, this temptation will be our most difficult to move past. So we can resist this temptation by thinking intentionality, not innovation. Again, that's... Uh, I think that's the air we breathe um, in our culture. Uh, things aren't going great. Uh, the numbers aren't there. We need to innovate. We need to shine. We need to get this thing a little bit more shiny. 
so we can attract more people to this thing. And uh, prayer meetings are not shiny all the time. Uh, it's hard work. Um, so we can resist the, this temptation by thinking intentionality, not innovation. Uh, praying without ceasing gives prayer gatherings their rightfully expected place in the life of our church. All right, so if we see that uh, God tells us that we ought to be praying without ceasing, I think all of us would say yes to that. When you're thinking about yourself rightly, biblically, that we need God in our lives for every single thing, for the breath that's in us right now, to the food that we need, right, to our mental capacity, to our just to walk around, we uh, to engage uh, the spiritual warfare that we are in. So it should make sense that we ought to be praying without ceasing. The scripture tells us that we should. And so praying without ceasing, though, gives prayer gatherings the rightfully expected place in the life of our church. In other words, it just makes sense that we should have uh, formal times of praying together. Uh, I want to connect that to being it's intentional um, because... Uh, I think it's true that none of us on our own uh, drift towards godliness. It's not a natural thing that we have. Uh, so we need to be intentional about it. And thankfully, God in His grace sets the essentials in front of us, um, tells us what it should look like, tells us what we need to be doing, roll up your sleeves, put forth effort, this sort of stuff. Um, and so we just have to be intentional about it. And again, I think that's a, that's a, a, a gracious word to us. Um, just be intentional. What does that mean? Well, let's just plan to have it. Let's show up. Here we go. So you just got to, yeah, be intentional about it. And that is uh, that's a helpful way to around this. Um, and then just this thought. Uh, we can't create in others a desperate need for God, but we can create the space for desperate people to go to God. Uh, don't mean to be too bumper stickery on that one, but um, just thoughtfully thinking through that. Uh, we can't create in others a desperate need for God. Who can do that? God. God. Uh, we can be um, uh, as convincing as we can, as winsome as we should be. What evangelism is, it's sharing the gospel and uh, in a winsome uh, way, pressing people to respond to us. Um, but we can sleep at night with the reality that we can't create this longing in anybody, um, but God can. But we can create the space for desperate people to go to God. Harry? Could you, could you explain that a little more? Um, the second part. Yes, the second part? Yeah. Okay, so this is just, again, trying to be intentional. Um, and so to create space for desperate people, uh, that's us. Uh, desperate people to create the space is, for instance, in our second and fourth Wednesdays of the summer, we're trying to create space because none of us naturally drift towards these things. So just trying to be helpful about saying, hey, um, second and fourth Wednesdays, we're creating space in the life of our church to gather together as needy people uh, together and bringing our burdens to the Lord. Does that make a little bit more sense? Josh? Yeah. But the numbers doesn't determine the quality. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a good word, Josh. To kind of there's so many different uh, facets that make up praying together, right? And that's a that's a good word on one of those things uh, to be able to say that yeah, um, uh, a smaller group sometimes um, allows the the time together to be sweeter. Um, while it's interesting that sometimes that might be an impediment to some who are not more uh, extroverted or who don't know people, but that's okay, right? Because all of this is all of this is uh, working together, and it, we shouldn't look at this thing as uh, we've got it figured out and we have to have this um, uh, smooth um, 
moving machine, you know, in October. Because uh, this is this is the life of the church, and all of us are different uh, places in our walk with the Lord, right? So some of us were like, yeah, we're engaged in that, been doing this, I know, and we forget how intimidating it can be for a, a new brother and sister in Christ to, to show up and to um, not only talk with other people that they are just now getting to know, but to pray together with them. It's an intimidating sort of thing. But yeah, as we, as we uh, by our um, uh, persistence and just our presence there, we speak to the reality that, man, but it's, it's benefited me. Right, so I, I know that it, I know it'll benefit you. Yeah, Wendy. It would be helpful to me if you would define the difference between effort and intentionality. Effort and intentionality. The difference between the two. I mean, uh, I don't know that there guess, guess is the much question, one. I guess the question is: is is a prayer life determined by our effort or by God's grace in our life? Uh, I would say yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I say yes to that without being without trying to be cute because uh, grace is opposed. Maybe this would be helpful. This has been helpful for me over the years. Grace is opposed to earning, but it's not opposed to effort. Agreed. So, so when I gather together to pray, is there effort involved? Yeah, there's a lot of effort involved in that. Um, but, but, but I'm looking to God to say. So make every effort to add to your faith X, Y, and Z. Um, so there is effort involved. Uh, if we then are uh, banking on our effort to twist God's arm to do something, then we're off, I think, scripturally there. So yeah, I would say yes to that. Any other thoughts for Wendy on that? We've all got effort and earning figured out, so. Okay. <laughs> It's the, the problem would be connecting intentionality and effort, whatever that work is, and say, if I don't have a lot of people, then that was for nothing. Yeah. But to say, this effort is intentional just because that's the thing, then that's, you know, we're not looking at them numbers so that, which I almost wonder if sometimes this temptation is more pastoral than. Mm -hmm. Because you guys are the ones who are like, eh, there's three people, let's cancel. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 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 it's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Alan. I was thinking that intentionality has a planning component behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe after it has more of an execution component behind it. An intentional person will, will say, we will meet the first Sunday of every week for prayer, and the person filled with effort will make it sure that they can. Yeah. But overall, they're very small. Yeah. Yeah. And also, good. Yeah. Good things to yeah process through that. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. I thought it was just this way. It struck me is that the intentionality is is that the, the focus is on God, not on the components of of what's happening. Mm. Um, so you know, your intention is to, is to pray and focus on God, not get together or um, not spend check some other special person. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, that's not a helpful thought there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, then John finishes off uh, the book. Um, by moving from uh, these temptations, uh, identifying them, and then providing uh, paths um, to overcome those temptations with the reality of prayer's usefulness now. Um, he says this, prayer is taught by Jesus in the Lord's Prayer is a perishable item. Prayer's usefulness is intended for this life. So... Um, Think about this one for a second. Prayer is taught by Jesus in the Lord's Prayer is a perishable item. Prayer's usefulness is intended for this life. We think about that. You don't need to pray when you die. <laughs> don't need to pray when you die. Why not? Because you're with the Lord. Okay. 
death. And the things that we're talking to him about when we're face to face with our Lord looks uh, drastically different than when we're here, right? Yeah. Some, some people have said that when we pray, we get God. So when we're in heaven, we'll have him there. Yeah. And because uh, in your presence, there is fullness of joy, who is the Lord, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, in these last couple of minutes, I just want to um, say it a different way than um, Cheryl so aptly put it. Um, a hearty amen to that, though. So let's just think through this. The prayer is taught by Jesus and the Lord's prayer is a parish by him. Prayer's usefulness is intended for this life. So, um, uh, as we're here um, in this world, we pray that our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Um, John says this on 126. Um, when we're together with the Lord, heaven will meet earth, and his name will be honored by everyone throughout all eternity. So at that point, we no longer need to be praying, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, because thankfully it will be in the fullest expression of that. And this is one of the, one of the uh, many reasons that um, uh, heaven on earth will be so sweet. Um, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, the same um, reality is at work in these things. So, for instance, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When it is, it is. Right? So, there will be no more enemies attempting to overthrow his kingdom. Um, give us this day our daily bread. When, uh, when the end of the story comes to fruition... We'll be face to face forever with the bread of life. Right? So, forgive us uh, our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. We'll have the experience, we will have experienced the culmination of this truth with no need for Jesus to forgive any more of our sins. We'll be living in that forgiveness with no ongoing need to forgive others because everyone will be made perfect. And then lastly, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. John says, Satan will be spending eternity in the place of eternal torment prepared for him, while we'll be safely in the home prepared for us by our loving Father. There will be an infinite separation between us and the enemy of our souls. So then he brings all these things together. The culmination of our study looks like this. So praying together shapes us into the people that God has saved us to be. It nourishes us like man as we face the daily struggles of living in a broken world. So don't wait until tomorrow to make use of it. Uh, you have today. You have breath in your lungs right now. So breathe deeply, breathe often, and breathe together. So, um, again, uh, hopefully... Um, uh, hopefully some things for us as the people of God here at Five Points to uh, be thinking through. Hopefully something for you, um, for us as individual members um, of God's people here at Five Points to be thinking through. Um, encourage you not to do that alone all the time because uh, struggles and questions that you have about praying together specifically, I guarantee you that other brothers and sisters in Christ have the same questions. So let me, um, let me close by asking God just to uh, let this um, study uh, bear fruit. Uh, we can thank him that it will, um, but we can ask him to help us uh, along the way. So let me close this in prayer. So Father, we thank you that you are our Father. And that you are in heaven. We thank you that your sovereignty is ruling over all. We thank you that as we are gathered here today, there's a huge reality that we don't want to miss. And that's the fact that you have gathered us together. 
Uh, we were scattered, each of us, uh, living after the desires of our own uh, selves, not caring about you or anyone else. But uh, we were uh, blind, your word tells us that we were dead in our sins. Uh, but you, uh, out of grace and love, moved and you saved. And so now, uh, as we once were scattered, uh, you have gathered us together. And so today, uh, here we are. Uh, so brothers and sisters, um, united together in Jesus, um, part of a family here. And so we thank you for it. We thank you uh, for showing us the beauty of praying, not only as individuals in our prayer closets, but also uh, as our Lord taught us to pray um, with those plural pronouns in mind and to be living those out as we gather together to pray. So help us to think through some of these things that we have spent the last couple of months uh, thinking through. Help us to tie our thoughts to Scripture. Um, we need you uh, by your Spirit to help us along because we do want to be uh, the people that you have called us to be, that we would um, uh, flourish. And we thank you that as your Spirit is at work, we will be uh, the salt that our world so desperately needs. We will be the light. Um, in this dark place that you have uh, commissioned us and enabled us to be. So we look forward forward to seeing how you will continue to be at work in us uh, for the good of others around us and for your glory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.